Welcome to Military HF Radio, Episode 4, Voice of America Coverage Analysis Program Analysis. I'm your host, Matthew Sherburn, KF4 WZB. Almost to the middle of our nine episode series, so we still have episodes one, two, and three posted. Feel free to watch those if you have not yet, and stay tuned for episodes five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So for today's agenda, I'm going to talk about the importance of HF reliability prediction and how most of us use VOACAP analysis in order to do so. VOACAP actually uh, was developed by NTIA and ITS for Voice of America, basically our broadcast station. And they use this to figure out uh, frequency and how far it will propagate based on a time of the day. So it is a propagation prediction software that is still maintained. Uh, Mr. Greg Hand maintains the code, the executable, so that you can have it local. But even more fantastic is Yari OH6BG maintains a online website along with his other counterparts that you see there, James Watson and Yuho. So they, uh, between America and Finland, can work together on this, which is absolutely fantastic. So having an online interface allows a lot more user-friendly GUI as opposed to the more archaic 1990s-esque executable. Uh, the, the one thing to consider though is if you do not have access to the website or if the server for some reason goes down and Yari did experience this the end of October 2018, beginning of November 2018, he, he uh, noticed a pretty sizable denial of service attack on this website, then having the local executable allows you to be able to not worry about that. But what are the benefits of using the online website? Well, they update all the time, the current atmospheric conditions and some of the modeling that may not be as up to date when you're using the local executable. So let's look at it. This is the first splash screen. If you go to www.voacap.com, you don't actually come up with this screen first, but what you're gonna do is point to point coverage and you get to this screen, which is actually at further forward slash HF forward slash index.html. It presents a red balloon and a blue balloon. This is where you have the transmitter site and the receiver site. You're, in, you're intended from and to. So what we can do is click on the red balloon and move it to where you need. Subsequently, the blue balloon, you're gonna move that to where the other distant end station you wanna speak with and place that on the map. Upper right-hand corner, you see here in the red boxes, you can set what transmit mode. So you can either do single sideband, they actually just updated it for FT8, and also you can do CW. That matters. If you do not put the correct modulation scheme, you're not gonna get the correct predicted analysis. So if you accidentally leave it, it usually just defaults on CW. That um, transmits through the noise in the HF environment much farther than single sideband voice does. And so you're, you're, not, you're not gonna get the accurate prediction you think you're gonna have. That actually happened to me. I thought I could get from New York State all the way to Japan. The prediction said so, but unfortunately I forgot I had it set in CW. So SSB, and then I looked at it again and there was just no way that was gonna happen with the particular antenna I had. Next most important thing is the output power level. So is it gonna be 100 watts? Is it gonna be 25 watts? There is a wide range of output powers. Just pick the one that's closest to your setup. So let's say you're using a military tactical radio, man pack, battery operated, you know, 25 watts, or pick the 10 watts to be even safer. If you are connected to an amplifier, depending if it's like 100, 150, or 400 watt amplifier, make sure you have that set there. And most of this discussion for this particular analysis is gonna be centered around near vertical incident skywave, but you would just put in the information you had for your particular antenna type and how far you're gonna operate. I am going to be discussing this as if we have a area of operation where we're operating within a 400 mile radius, 
to conduct this analysis. Okay, next, we're gonna click on antennas and then off from the left is gonna pop out a little dialog box. You will set every single antenna type for each band to dipole at five meters high, 17 feet high, and set that accordingly. As long as everybody in your unit is all using the same type of dipole antenna, horizontal dipole antenna, you know, estimate around five meters high. Or if it is a vehicle, you will take that vertical whip antenna and you will bend it over such that it will establish a high angle takeoff of, of the RF energy. That's what you do. Uh, do not leave your HF uh, whip antennas in the vertical. You need to get a rope tied at the end and pull it over the front of the vehicle. And that way it too, these mobile HF platforms can also communicate on Nivis. This is the critical thing though. After you're done setting all of this, go back over and click on antennas. This is just the one cork of this website. Because if you do not, and then you try to click on settings, which is what we're gonna click on next, you, you will see that it won't pop up. It won't go over this other dialog box. So you gotta click antennas, and then this will go away. Then we will click on settings, and this is where you're going to better model your noise. Are you in a quiet environment or are you in a noisy environment? Basically, are you kind of out in the woods or are you near a lot of power lines? Just select what you think is according to your environment. Um, do not necessarily worry about setting the sunspot number. That's what SSN is. Uh, the program actually goes back, even though it says negative one there, it goes back and actually researches what is the current sunspot number for the day. Coverage area map settings. This is where it's absolutely critical you set this according to what frequency range, if you will, you are trying to model for. If you do not, once you come down here to click on the different types of analyses, it will be conducted according to whatever band you selected, uh, depending on which button you pick. So let's say we wanna look at what the coverage map looks like if we're operating in the 80 meter band. This is more of what we discuss in amateur radio, but even if you're military, you need to understand that there's a correlation between wavelength, which is why you see this 80 M, 80 meter, to frequency. Episode one discusses how you convert between the two uh, in case you're still fuzzy on that. So 80 meter around 3.7 megahertz, don't get wrapped around the axle if you've got a frequency that you're only able to use at like 2.5 megahertz, for instance. You're gonna see in this prediction software where you'll be able to see if that's still gonna work for you. Okay, UTC, the time. The time of day, according to Zulu time or UTC, that you're intending to operate. And then you can set a range. Set range to one hour to just get the, the that one hour from let's say 2200 to 2300 UTC. Or if you set range to 12 hours, depending on what you select at the bottom, it will show up with about 12 different graphs showing by the by hour of what's happening with your signal. Really neat to see uh, when we always talk about in theory, you change frequencies or if you stay on that frequency and you and you see what happens to the ionosphere as time goes by. We said that during the day, you typically need to have, operate the higher frequencies and at night you drop down to the lower frequencies. So again, after you're done with settings, you need to click on the settings button back at the right so that this dialog box on the left goes away. Next, you can click on prop charts. You click on this and then immediately you have feedback that if you're trying to operate from this transmitter to this receiver, anything, I'm gonna put it out there, around 70 to 75% reliability and above is about where you need to be. This isn't like weather where there's like a 20% chance of rain and yet it still rains. Okay, look, if you're not above around 70, 75% reliability, don't even count on that shot working. So immediately you can see that on the x-axis is your UTC, from 1 2400 that you can use frequencies around the 80 meter band throughout the day and get above a 70% reliability. Or if you need to go to another band, you're not gonna be able to use it until let's say 
about 1200 UTC on the 60 meter band, and that's how to read this. So again, Y axis is your percent reliability, and then your X axis is the time of day. Next, um, we wanna click on the prop wheel. The prop wheel is another way to visualize your ability to communicate. How to read this? Concentrically around in a circle is the time of day. And then emanating from the center is the bands. So we have the 10 meter band all the way at the outside, 12, 15, 17, 20, 30, 40, 60, and 80 meter bands. This is a much faster way to see time of day versus what band you need to be on to achieve at least 70% or above reliability. We can even say probably more around 75% and better. So again, click on prop wheel again, and this dialog box will go away. Again, if you click on anything else and it doesn't pop up immediately, that's because you have another dialog box already open and you need to close that back out by again clicking on these buttons. So now onto the good stuff. At the very bottom of that website, you've got a series of buttons, band by band prediction, best freak, reliability and SDBW, that is the signal strength in DBW, and then all year prediction, QSO window, season, planner, PTP, gray line, distance, reliability map, SDBW map, and DXCC gray line. For people just trying to plan out, can frequencies and time of days achieve what you need for your plan? Just reliability and SDDB. W and reliability map are the only two buttons you really need to pay attention to. Now let's see, we were discussing about HF Nivis in the previous episode. Look at this. Again, we have this area that almost cover, well, yeah, covers the entire New, New England and then some uh, with at least 75% or higher reliability. Okay, trademark here of HF Nivis. It doesn't go beyond around probably 400 miles in radius. And we can then see it in another light. Okay, again, this reliability map only shows the propagation condition for that hour. In this case, you see at the top here, 2200 UTC and a single frequency. Okay, that does not show you the whole picture though. So if we click on reliability and SDBW button here, it presents you another way to look at it with a x-axis showing time and the y-axis showing the frequency. Immediately you can see that any frequencies over 10 megahertz that you may have been assigned by your spectrum manager or that you decide to use are not usable. They will not support you talking from wherever you selected the red balloon, the transmitter site, and the blue balloon, the intended receiver site. You can use this, go back to the spectrum manager and say, look, the, the frequencies you gave me, you only gave me between 10 and 30 megahertz, some kind of combination of frequencies. You need to allocate me some open frequencies below 10 megahertz to make this happen. You can use this to prove your point. Now you see a dark black line here. This is actually the frequency of optimum transmission. If we go back to episode one, we say that the key frequency you want to operate at is around eh, 10 to 15 percent below the uh, frequency of optimum transmission. And so you can use this to also further plan it. I will caveat this though. Some other people have used this prediction software and found that sometimes they actually used, had to use frequencies 5% above. Well, as you can see here, that's still within this area of dark red where you're still above 85, even 90% reliability. You do notice though, that as you go from the daytime frequencies, or actually it's back up, Technically, in this part of the world, this time in UTC means daytime frequencies, or sorry, nighttime frequencies. <laughs> you have to use lower frequencies. And then as we get into the latter part of the day, although it looks different, um, 1800 UTC, but that's because in New York, it's actually midday, you have to go higher. You cannot necessarily use one frequency and write it. In this case, though, you can see how 
with where we want to operate, you could use, let's just say three megahertz and ride it throughout the entire day. That's not always the case. If we, for instance, had to transmit um, from, let's say Fort Drum to some place way in Maine, then you may actually have to increase your frequency as you get into the afternoon because it's actually further in the distance. So you just have to plug it in and, and plan that out. Here are some other options for you as well that you know if you if you want to or should you you know you can select these but these are not as meaningful as what we saw here with these okay and then so on and so forth you have additional ways to model so thank you very much join in the next episode on hf antennas